Ladies and gentlemen, the Global Bamboo and Rattan Congress Ministerial Summit will begin. Please get back to your seats. 尊敬的各位来宾，世界竹藤大会部长级高峰论坛现在开始。First, welcome His Excellency Ruben Ernesto Flores, Minister of the Agriculture and Livestock of Ecuador. Ruben Ernesto Flores Garcia. Señores viceministros, delegados oficiales, presentes en la reunión del día de hoy del Imbar, distinguidos. Invitados, damas y caballeros, es un honor para el Ecuador presidir el Consejo del Imbar y representar a sus 43 países miembros hasta el año 2019. Imbar, desde su creación hace 20 años atrás, es la única organización a nivel mundial que a través del impulso del bambú y el ratán lleva una alternativa viable para el desarrollo de las economías locales de nuestros países. En este sentido, el bambú y el ratán pueden contribuir significativamente a alcanzar varios de los objetivos del desarrollo sustentable. El bambú, con más de 10.000 posibles usos, permite generar miles de empleos, principalmente para los jóvenes, las mujeres, a través de emprendimientos innovadores e inclusivos. De la misma manera, el bambú puede convertirse en una herramienta estratégica para la lucha contra el cambio climático que, como ustedes conocen, afecta principalmente a los pequeños y medianos productores de nuestros países. El bambú también es cultura, es energía limpia, el bambú es turismo, el bambú es construcción sostenible, el bambú es economía, es inclusión, el bambú es biodiversidad, es ambiente, es innovación. En suma, el bambú es presente y futuro de nuestra población. Es por ello que debemos promover la generación de política pública que impulse el desarrollo y el aprovechamiento sostenible del bambú y el ratán. En Ecuador, el bambú es un material nativo que tiene una historia que imprime identidad. Culturalmente, forma parte del patrimonio material. Por ejemplo, el bambú es altamente apreciado como material de construcción, de viviendas de bajo costo, pero también en arquitectura de alta escuela, en urbanizaciones y viviendas de alta gama, y también es empleado en plantaciones cercas, objetos de decoración, muebles, entre otros usos. Desde tiempo inmemorial, las edificaciones de la costa ecuatorial utilizan, por ejemplo, la caña guadúa para su gran construcción. Incluso en el tiempo de la colonia se enviaba gran cantidad de bambú a la capital del Virreinato del Perú. En la actualidad, el Ecuador, por ser un país rico y megadiverso, cuenta con excelentes condiciones geográficas, climáticas y de suelos que le permiten desarrollar cerca de 40 especies de bambú distribuidas en 600.000 hectáreas. Es el cuarto país en América Latina con mayor diversidad en especies de bambú. Este sector involucra a más de 500.000 personas a lo largo de su cadena productiva y aporta con el 0.5% del PIB, lo que representa alrededor de 500 millones de dólares. El desarrollo de una industria responsable podrá generar 10.000 fuentes de empleo en los próximos 10 años. Es por ello que estamos trabajando para dar la importancia que este rubro amerita, por lo que estamos empeñados en llevar adelante una estrategia nacional del bambú desde el 2018 al 2022, misma que ha contado con el apoyo técnico del INVAR para su elaboración y tiene una relación directa con al menos cuatro intervenciones emblemáticas del Gobierno Nacional. El presidente Lenín Moreno, ustedes lo han escuchado, basa su estrategia en el plan Toda una Vida, con su plan Casa para Todos, Reverdecer el País, el Acuerdo Nacional por el Empleo y la Inversión Productiva, la Innovación y la Inclusión, 
y en el caso agropecuario con una estrategia de intervención emblemática denominada la minga nacional agropecuaria. La minga es una palabra quichua que busca explicar el construir una suerte común, es un prestamanos. Desde esta perspectiva, esta estrategia se alinea con los objetivos del desarrollo 1, 7, 11, 12, 13 y 15. Esta hoja de ruta que fue construida con la participación de los actores de la cadena productiva del bambú nos lleva hacia un manejo sostenible del recurso, su aprovechamiento técnico para activar el desarrollo multisectorial tendiente a mejorar la situación de miles de ecuatorianos, sobre todo en las áreas rurales que están vinculados con las actividades en donde se desarrolla el bambú, generando con ello grandes beneficios sociales, económicos, ambientales y de alto impacto. Para ello es muy importante entonces fortalecer la cooperación sur-sur y lograr un mayor apoyo por parte de la cooperación internacional, ya que tenemos algunos desafíos comunes por delante, como son el cambiar el paradigma cultural sobre el valor del bambú, concientizar a los consumidores sobre los beneficios de uso para las familias y para la sociedad, mejorar los procesos con tecnología e innovación en los distintos eslabones de la cadena para conseguir productos de calidad y a precios competitivos, ampliar los canales de comercialización, reforzar una distribución equitativa de los márgenes, encontrar nuevos mercados, disminuir la cadena de intermediación y contrarrestar las barreras asimétricas de información que existen en la comercialización del bambú. Generar también conocimiento especializado sobre el bambú que desarrolle nueva tecnología para el manejo, el tratamiento, la transformación y su consumo. Aumentar el financiamiento e inversión para el desarrollo de la cadena productiva y como gobierno del Ecuador estamos brindando todo el apoyo político para impulsar este sector y hacemos un llamado al resto de países miembros del INVAR, organismos internacionales, países cooperantes, aliados estratégicos, a fortalecer sus esfuerzos en favor de millones de personas que dependen de este recurso para su supervivencia. Tengo la certeza que esta jornada de trabajo contribuirá a promover desde varios ámbitos el desarrollo del bambú como un rubro, un rubro sustentable y como un material del presente y del futuro. Muchas gracias. En este punto arrancaremos entonces la apertura de este diálogo con los diferentes invitados. Invitamos al podio a San Jialong, administrador de la Administración Nacional Forestal y de Pastos de China. Chu 中国高度重视竹藤资源的保护和利用国际出腾组织在加快全球出腾资源开发促进出腾产区脱贫解控推动可持续发展等方面发挥的积极作用并表示中国将继续支持国际出腾组织工作越同国际社会一道积极落实
传承发扬竹藤文化，深化竹藤交流合作，增强了信心，指明了方向。中国有竹类植物五百多种，是世界上竹类资源最丰富、竹子栽培历史最悠久的国家，树有“竹子王国”的美誉。中国政府高度重视竹藤资源的保护、培育与利用，将发展竹藤事业作为建设生态文明、建成全面小康社会的重要内容。通过编制发展规划、完善扶持政策。增加资金投入等措施，有力推动了中国竹藤事业的发展。竹藤面积、竹材许集和产量居居世界首位。二零一七年，全国竹林面积达到六百七十万公顷，竹产业产值达到两千三百六十五亿五亿元。对促进农民就业增收发挥了重要作用。全国有八百多万农民直接从事竹林培育、竹制品加工等生产经营。浙江安吉等地竹产业收入占到了农民收入的一半以上。我们规划到二零二零年，全国竹产业总产值将达到三千亿元。直接就业人数达到一千万人。近年来，中国竹材加工技术与装备研发、竹产品创新都取得了一些突破性的进展。竹子的经营加工和综合利用水平明显提高，竹产业化进程明显加快，能够生产竹家具、竹纤维、竹饮料、竹地板等上万种竹产品。中国还有历史悠久和丰富多彩的竹文化，竹子一直是坚韧不拔、虚怀若谷、高风亮节等传统美德的象征，在陶冶着人们的情操、弘扬着生态文化等方面发挥着积极的作用。女士们、先生们，全球有超过一千六百多种竹子和六百多种藤本植物，竹林总面积超过三千万公顷。竹藤产业是典型的绿色产业，在推动绿色发展和消除贫困等方面发挥着重要作用。二零一八年世界竹藤大会以“竹藤男男合作，助推可持续绿色发展”为主题，对于加快竹藤事业发展、壮大绿色经济规模、推动全球可持续发展具有重要意义。借此机会，我愿就深化“男男合作”。推动全球竹藤事业发展，提三点建议：第一，积极培育开发竹藤资源，更好推动脱贫解困的和绿色发展。许多发展中国家有着丰富的竹藤资源，竹藤产业发展空间很大，需要在积极培育和有效保护的基础上，合理开发利用竹藤资源，让其更好地造福人民。中国竹藤资源培育和开发利用水平处于世界前列，具有丰富的经验和先进的技术。我们要通过“一带一路”等合作平台，鼓励、帮助各国培育、开发竹藤资源，共同提高竹藤产业的发展水平。第二，推动竹藤资源可持续发展，积极应对全球气候变化。竹藤资源具有较强的固碳、储碳能力，是人类应对气候变化的重要资源。应将竹藤资源纳入各国应对气候变化政策和投资支持的范围，加快发展本国竹藤产业，提高对应对气候变化能力，推动实现联合国“二零三零”可持续发展目标。第三。发展国际竹藤组织作用，发挥国际竹藤组织作用，共同构建高效合作交流平台。国际竹藤组织自一九九七年成立以来，不断发展壮大，一直是南南合作的典范，有力的促促进了竹藤事业可持续发展。继续利用好国际竹藤组织这一重要平台。深化国际交流与合作，有利于
各国共享先进技术和成功经验，更好推动全球竹藤事业的发展。女士们、先生们，竹藤事业发展前景广阔，潜力巨大。中国国家林业和草业局作为国际竹藤组织对华联系的窗口单位，今后将一如既往地支持国际竹藤组织工作。同时，加强与其他成员国在竹藤领域的交流与合作，携手共创全球竹藤事业的美好未来。最后，预祝大会取得圆满成功！谢谢大家。al excelentísimo señor J.C. Hutchinson, ministro de, sin portafolio del Ministerio de Industria, Comercio, Agricultura y Pesca de Jamaica. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this morning we look at the development of bamboo, and bamboo, one of the world's fastest growing plants and a rapidly renewable source of fiber, is a multipurpose non-timber forest resource which today supports value chains across the world worth approximately 60 billion US dollars per year. In recent years, the innovations in bamboo processing have seen bamboo become a legally approved building material across the Andean countries of Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, while industrial development in Asia has resulted in domestic bamboo sectors in countries such as India and China growing in the value to $4 billion and $32 billion, respectively. However, Despite these advances today, bamboo in the Caribbean is heavily underutilized. Recognizing this and the considerable bamboo resources in Jamaica and the other nations of the Caribbean community, we see bamboo helping the region to reduce poverty and promote green growth develop increased regional and international trade and investment, restore degraded lands and reduce vulnerability to national disasters, and attain the sustainable development goals as en enunciated by the United Nations. With over 60,000 hectares of bamboo mixed with other vegetation that was growing in an unmanaged way, we recognize that with the use of standards, Jamaica could control the growth of bamboo in the same way, for example, we control the growth of sugarcane. We would then have a sustainable material that could go into the production of items such as activated bamboo carbon. Recognizing the potential benefits that can be accrued to the country by the utilization of bamboo, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries decided we needed to move the industry beyond the offering of a limited number of tourist craft items towards the development and commercialization of new bamboo products incorporating standards. The ministry gave the responsibility for the development of this market-led standard-driven industry to the Bureau of Standards of Jamaica. As a first step towards the development of our fledging bamboo industry, we ensured that Jamaica became the 38th member of the International Organization for Bamboo and Rattan in 2012. 
After joining IMBAR, Jamaica took steps to develop the industry with a focus on four promising value chains, bamboo charcoal and charcoal products, bamboo pulp, paper, packaging, and textiles, bamboo building and furniture, edible bamboo shoots, and consumables. This bamboo value chain gave us a roadmap for our bamboo standardization process. This roadmap has been guided by information received through our membership in INBAR, of which the maker held the chairmanship between November 2014 and November 2017. To demonstrate also to promote the use of bamboo, a bamboo reinforced concrete house was constructed and displayed at our major agricultural and food show in 2014. In addition, we have developed some 14 prototypes for various bamboo byproducts, including a charcoal kiln, charcoal for cooking purposes, charcoal water filter, lumber, ketchup, stylus for smartphones, and tablet computers, body wash, soaps, and stretcher for carrying sick persons. Some of these items are sold locally. Through a collaboration agreement involving the Bureau of Standards Jamaica and two of our universities, University of Technology, Jamaica and the University of the West Indies and private sector organizations, research and development activi activities are being executed with the aim of developing new standards for bamboo in construction, which may be incorporated into the application documents for our national building code. This will ensure the sustainable building of attractive low- and middle-income houses and tourist cabins. Also, in response to the need for alternate packaging to styrofoams and plastic, the Bamboo Product Standard Technical Committee of the Bureau of Standards of Jamaica recently completed work for the introduction of 34 Jamaican standards for the pulp, paper, and packaging industry. INBAR and the BSJ are now collaborating on the execution of a Caribbean International Bamboo Symposium to be held at the Jamaica Conference Center in Kingston from November 27th to the 29th, 2018. The theme, Bamboo, an economic high-value chain resource for the Caribbean. The new bamboo industry is now a potentially lucrative play field for innovators and micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises with low risk for bankers who can now support entrepreneurs with confidence that those monies will be repaid. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the journey to use bamboo to create wealth for Jamaicans while mitigating the impact of climate change. In this regard, we would like to express our gratitude to INBAR and the government of China for the invaluable assistance that has been provided so far, and we look forward to continued collaboration as together we grow the global bamboo industry. Thank you. Ahora escucharemos al excelentísimo señor Shakti Bahadur Basnet, Ministro Forestal y del Ambiente de Nepal. The Chairperson, Honorable Ministers, 
Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, namaste and greetings from Nepal. I would like to take this opportunity to offer our special thanks to INBAR and the People's Republic of China's State Forestry Administration for organizing this Congress. As a founding member of INBAR, I am grateful to discuss and share with you various aspects of bamboo and rattan for promoting green economy and sustainable development. Also, allow me to express my sincere gratitude to the organizers for the excellent arrangement, arrangement of the Congress and for the warm hospitality extended to us. The Chair, I am honored to be here to address this Congress in the backdrop of the progress Nepal has made since the approval of its new constitution in 2015. Following the election to the three tiers of government under the federal setup, a stable government is in place with a long-term vision of prosperous Nepal, happy Nepali. The policies of the government are now focused on ensuring the socio-economic transformation of the country. The Ministry of Forest and Environment is formulating new national forest policy that aims to, to support the national vision as well as to contribute to achieving sustainable development goals, particularly Goal 13 and 15. These goals call on us to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts and promote the conservation, restoration and sustainable use of ecosystems, particularly forests, wetlands, mountains and drylands. The first action in this regard is the optimal utilization of national resources and ensuring adequate investments in priority sectors. At the same time, we are committed to fostering the economic growth through joint venture and private sector investment in natural resources. The Ministry of Forest and Environment, as the government entity mandated for sustainable management of forests and biodiversity resources, as well as for developing policies for low carbon economy, is highly committed to working on pollution control, waste management, and greenery promotion at country scale. I am glad to say that forest sector covers about 45% of Nepali land. Forests make up the large part of mountain ecosystems and hence substantially contribute to rural economy. Forestry sector is the basis of broad-based economic growth in the country and also supports associated sectors such as agriculture, tourism, hydropower, irrigation and drinking water. We believe that the proper management of these resources will contribute in sustainable economic growth and development. Sustainable and scientific forest management has been a key forest management strategy in the country, aiming at enhancing economic, social and environmental benefits from all types of forest to present and future generations. For attaining this objective, we are focusing on our programs and activities toward increasing employment and income generation opportunities through multiple use and mobilization of forest resources. The Chair, Nepal has favorable land and climatic situation for various kinds of bamboo species. More than four dozens of bamboo species are available in Nepal. Bamboo and rattan in Nepal are multipurpose resources and are used for, but not limited to housing materials, furniture and food. Besides, bamboo and rattan are also sources of sustainable income for indigenous peoples and local communities, including women. Bamboo is also used to restore several degraded lands and prevent defrostation. We all are here to enhance 
our economic thinking to give full value to our natural resources like bamboo and rattan for promoting green economic growth. To that end, Ministry of Forest and Environment has identified whole value chain. Bamboo is one of the most prioritized items to intervene in the whole value chain process, ranging from mass plantation and production through processing to marketing. Government is committed to creating, enabling environment through reviewing and reforming policies, plans, programs and institutions for developing bamboo and rattan in the country. Yes, we are aware. China is a global leader for value chain in the production process of bamboo and rattan. It will be in the best interest of the member states like Nepal to learn from China in capacity development, technologies, and advanced practices from enhancing propagation and value addition of bamboo and rattan in their respective territories. Nepal would like to expand cooperation with China and other participating members, member states. In this Congress for strengthening value chain management of bamboo and rattan in its territory, we would li also like to make a difference by lifting the economy through the proper production, expansion and, and industrialization of bamboo and rattan. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals have been included in our national policies and program. Together, we can end the po poverty, protect our planet, and enjoy the prosperity and happiness. Nepal believes that the better conservation and promotion of bamboo and rattan will make visible inputs in achieving UN SDG by 2030. As member state of INBAR, we have seen, in, seen the importance of all four topics for discussion. We, as a dependent on natural resources for our survival, should ensure the better coexistence between the nature and humanity. This August gathering is one of our commitments to, toward creating safe environment linking with productivity, harmonizing green economy, strategy, and obtaining sustainable development. Nepal is standing here to share its common vision, mission, and plan that helps us creating environmentally safe, economically balanced, and socially inclusive human society. In this gathering, we are talking about green economy. Let's make it clear that we are not only the spending units, but an important player of, the, of a very strong revenue generating sector. South-South cooperation is required to establish this agenda within and amongst our countries. I would like to call for an active participation that will enable us to come up with practical plan which can be implemented with full place always in our respective member countries. Finally, but not the least, I believe the Congress will further strengthen ties among, strengthen ties among the member states in fostering cooperation in value chain of bamboo and rattan across the region, eventually contributing to restoring degraded lands fostering green economic growth and achieving sustainable development goals. In the future conference like this, we will be talking on our achievements targeted through this conference and we will come up with the innovative plans. I wish a grand success of the Congress. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Bien, en este momento invitamos a la profesora Madame Jian Sewi, copresidente de la Junta Directiva del INVAR, miembro de la Academia Internacional de Ciencias de la Madera, presidenta del Comité Organizador 
del Congreso Mundial del Bambú y el Ratán 2018. 我们相聚北京共商世界竹藤口书发展大计 在中国北京正式成立，今天印巴已经成为拥有四十三个成员国的全球性的国际机构，并且在二零一七年正式成为了联合国大会的永久观察员。二零一七年十一月六日。中国国家主席习近平阁下，在致印巴成立二十周年或贺信中，强调指出，中国将继续支持国际竹藤组织的工作，愿同国际社会一道，接近落实2030年可说发展议程。推动全球生态文明建设，推动构建人类命运共同体，共同建设更加美丽的世界。印巴在2016年发布的面向2020年的发展战略中，也确立了四个优先发展的战略目标。一是将竹藤资源纳入国家区域及全球经济社会和环境发展的政策框架能量建设和挑战并存同时我们也面临着竹藤资源经营管理水平等等的挑战国际政策对话
与人类社会可说发展的努力密切相关。在二零一五年，联合国通过的《二零三零全球可说发展议程》中，包含十七个可持续发展的目标，也 SDG， 其中呢有六个。与竹藤折界的相关。二零一七年四月，联合国大会审议通过的《联合国森林战略规划》，呃，二零一七到二零三零，阐述了全球林业发展愿景和使命，也为世界竹藤事业的发展指明了方向。为此，印巴愿意与成员国和国际社会合作，搭建世界竹藤大会这类政策对话的平台，完善竹藤领域的国际政策对话机制，为成员国发展和完善竹藤产业政策提供必要的支持。通过发挥政策效力，助力成员国和全球竹藤产业快速健康的发展。二是有效共享竹藤知识和信息。当今社会，知识和信息就是生产链。在过去二十多年的时间里。印巴与中国政府合作，面向成员国和合作伙伴，开展了形式多样、内容丰富的竹藤能力建设活动，包括小人员培训、技术转让和信息服务等，取得了积极的成效。针对目前，成员国的竹藤能力建设和知识信息的分享有较迫切的要求，印巴将技术的加强与东道国中国政府和国际伙伴的合作，同时创造有利条件，包括推动中非竹子中心的建设与运行，设立。面向成员国的能力建设项目，完善竹藤信息分享系统，及时更新，服务成员国竹藤企业、二零一八中国竹藤行业等等，通过多途径、多渠道、多样化的分享竹藤知识和信息。为世界竹藤产业发展提供有力的支持。三，是切实的加强竹藤人文交流与合作。竹藤文化，特别是竹文化，在竹藤国家都有着悠久的历史和深厚的底蕴，深受人们的喜爱。印巴愿意以这次二零一八世界竹藤大会举办为契机，通过丰富多彩的竹藤文化展示和交流活动，包括各国竹藤传统文化的挖掘、传承与弘扬，以竹藤为媒，以竹藤会友，创新和发展。竹藤领域人文交流与合作，为保护竹藤资源、壮大竹藤经济、改善竹区的生计，注入独特的文化驱动力。谢谢大家。y su ponencia. En este momento queda claro entonces en este Consejo Ministerial 
los grandes desafíos que tiene el INVAR y que tienen sus países miembros. Me parece que la opción del cambio requiere justamente alinear estas tres propuestas que acaba de hacer la doctora con relación justamente a promover el diálogo de la política pública y las experiencias que tiene en cada uno de los países. Cómo logramos tener un intercambio eficiente de los conocimientos y finalmente también cómo aterrizar esto en una cooperación efectiva que nos permita consolidar el desarrollo del sector del bambú como cadena sistémica productiva, pero además cómo a través de esta cadena logramos consolidar también los objetivos de Naciones Unidas del desarrollo eh, planteados. Me parece que ahí están realmente los aportes importantes de todo este esfuerzo, entendiendo justamente la necesidad de garantizar esta complementación y esta cooperación eficiente y además asumir la corresponsabilidad que tiene cada uno de los miembros eh, en el Instituto para poder consolidar este trabajo en los próximos años. Y el tremendo, la tremenda oportunidad que tendríamos a través del bambú y del ratán lograr justamente apoyar la construcción de estos objetivos en términos más aterrizados. Eh, con esto doy paso a la siguiente parte, eh, que es eh, un par de mensajes eh, de video. Lo preside el, señora, el señor Nicolás Rossellini, coordinador residente de Naciones Unidas y representante eh, de Naciones Unidas en la República Popular de China. Adelante, por favor. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. I'd like to start by expressing my appreciation to the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization for this opportunity to participate in the Global Bamboo and Rattan Congress 2018. I'm honored to be at a gathering that brings together ministers and policymakers with community leaders, experts, and managers in promoting the bamboo industry as a vehicle for developing the local economy in pursuit of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Over the last 35 years, China has experienced profound economic growth and social transformation, which has helped to bring hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. Unfortunately, globally, as well as in China, economic growth and development have often come at large environmental costs. With the opportunities that new technology offers and increased awareness of the impact of human action on the environment, this can now change. We have an unprecedented opportunity to make sure that future growth is both socially and environmentally sustainable. In this spirit, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was adopted in September 2015. This agenda includes 17 sustainable development goals and 169 targets. It is an action plan to end poverty and ensure prosperity for all, while at the same time protecting the planet. In other words, it places sustainability at its core. Bamboo, being a renewable material and one of the fastest growing plants on earth, has a large potential to be used in a way that can contribute to a more sustainable future. Not only can bamboo be used to produce sustainable alternatives for less environmentally friendly products, it can also be used to reduce deforestation and to combat climate change. In addition, bamboo can create sustainable livelihood opportunities for communities that produce cultural handicrafts made from it and also contribute to heritage conservation. These are just a few examples of the potential of bamboo, and I am sure that during this Congress you'll come up with many more examples and ideas on the role of bamboo and rattan in sustainable development. Before we move on, please join me in watching two video messages from my UN colleagues, Ms. Akim Steiner, Administrator of the United Nations Development Program, and Mr. Graziano da Silva, Director General of the Food and Agricultural Organization. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, jobs, poverty reduction, green growth. These may not be the words that come to mind when you think about bamboo and rattan. 
One a grass, the other a palm. They offer a nature-based way to create jobs, to reduce poverty, generate and achieve the sustainable development goals. The production of bamboo for furniture, construction, crafts or charcoal employs tens of millions of people around the world today. And sales of bamboo and rattan are estimated to account for about $60 billion worth of trade globally every year. The potential to increase this market is huge, particularly in Africa, where these crops could provide green economic growth opportunities and benefit rural communities. Both bamboo and rattan require little startup capital or skilled expertise, making them ideal accessible crops for the poor and more marginalized. With 2.7 billion people using solid biomass to cook, bamboo charcoal also provides an alternative green energy source that is comparable to wood charcoal, but without the smoke or the odor. Incredibly, bamboo and rattan are also very efficient carbon sinks. One hectare of bamboo forest is estimated to capture 13 tons of carbon per year, higher than many species of trees. Bamboo has also been called the power tool for restoring degraded lands by stabilizing and improving soil and preventing erosion. The International Network for Bamboo and Rattan has a key role in unleashing this potential by shaping policy, conducting research and by promoting South-South cooperation, a central theme also of this year Congress this year. We in the United Nations Development Program are trying to do our part. Indeed, as part of this global network, we work in many countries, such as Nepal, where we supported a project that uses bamboo and rattan to mitigate floods and landslides, or in Ghana, where we supported bicycle construction made from bamboo to encourage climate safe, transportation, and create jobs for women and youth. With so many interesting sessions and such a broad group of participants, I have no doubt that you will be engaged in very vibrant and constructive discussions over the next three days. On the part of UNDP, let me also commit that we are very keenly following both your deliberations as well as the partnerships that within BAR and others we can be part of supporting. I wish you a successful Congress and look forward to hearing about its outcomes and thank you once again for the opportunity to join you by means of this message. Thank you. Excellence, distinguished delegates, colleagues, Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to address the opening of this Congress as FAO reaffirms its partnership and support to the International Network for Bamboo and Rattan, the UNBAR. As you all know, bamboo has long been used throughout the world for many traditional use in housing and building, in energy, and of course, as food and feed for livestock. More recently, it was also recognized the versatility of some species which are able to restore soil, to conserve water, and to adapt to climate change. Supporting countries to achieve the SDGs is at the core of FAO's collaboration with Zimbar. In this contest, and in response to the bone challenge of land restoration, Inbar's member states committed to restore at least 5 million hectares of degraded land using bamboo. We look forward to working with Inbar to provide information and bamboo-based landscape restoration initiatives. In another important front of our joint work, FIO and IMBAR have associated with the new Partnership for Africa's Development, NIPAD, on a global assessment of bamboo for land restoration. In order to improve global statistics on bamboo forests, we have collected data on bamboo and in its ongoing Global Forest Research Assessment, 2020. IMBAR and FAO also began the process of developing a comprehensive global program using bamboo as a sustainable bioenergy source 
to support national efforts for climate resilience and lowering emissions. We believe these few examples only reflect the beginning of a productive partnership. I wish you all fruitful deliberation at this Congress and thank you very much for your attention. We now welcome Director General of International Bamboo and Rattan Organization, Dr. Hans Friedrich. 有请国际竹藤组织总干事费汉斯博士。Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. What I want to do in the next hour, and I think we have actually an hour and not what originally was planned less than an hour, is have a discussion with a few of my colleagues, a few of the vice ministers from our member states, and to learn from them, to hear from them, what bamboo and rattan really means in their national context, and to get an idea of how they see these opportunities that we've talked about. So we're going to have a dialogue, we're going to talk, and I hope we get a little bit of a discussion going. And as we seem to have time, we might even be able to get some input from the floor as well, which would be great. Chairs are being brought so that we don't have to stand. But let me start by introducing and inviting my five colleagues. I would like to invite the Minister of State for Environment of the Ministry of Water and Environment of Uganda, Mrs. Mari Goretti Kitutu. I would like to invite the Vice Minister of the Minister of Environment from Panama, Yamil Daniel Sanchez. The Minister of State of the Federal Ministry of Environment, Ibrahim Usman Jibril. The Deputy Minister of the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources of Ghana, Benito Uwusu Bio. And last but certainly not least, the Assistant Secretary of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, which is effectively a ministry, it's just that's how the Philippines calls it, Mrs. Nonita Caguayo, and I hope I have that right. Please join me for a discussion. So, ministers, this may not be how you are normally used to be in sessions, and I hope that we will be able to get some of your thoughts. What I would like to do is to just start and maybe I start actually in Ghana, Minister. The reason why I'm doing so is I know you have a bamboo and rattan development program, Baradep. Can you tell us a bit more what, what does Baradep mean and what does bamboo and rattan mean for Ghana? Well, like you just mentioned, uh, Baradep is uh, an acronym for our bamboo and rattan development program. Uh, this program uh, was initiated uh, in about 2022, 202, and uh, since then we have been uh, developing and promoting bamboo as a source of alternative livelihood for our people, especially in the rural areas. We have set up plantation development plans also for bamboo development, where this particular program is uh, promoting plantation development uh, in uh, especially our uh, mined and degraded areas. Currently, BARDEP has also helped in the setting up of our research uh, center, uh, which we have in a Kumasi, where we have our West African uh, Regional uh, Office. This particular office is also helping uh, our private entrepreneurs who are also eager to uh, invest in uh, the bamboo and rattan sector. Uh, I'm happy today to have seen a particular product from Ghana uh, which is actually currently world famous, that is the bamboo bicycle uh, in the foyer as I entered this uh, conference center. 
And so in a nutshell, that is all we are doing. Uh, we as a government is also helping to invest more in uh, bamboo uh, plantation to the extent that currently we even have a bamboo nursery in Kumasi as well. And this nursery is helping to propagate and also to transplant uh, and help in growing bamboo in Ghana. So that is the nutshell. But the future is that with the help of the Chinese government, uh, we are going to set up a training center. Uh, this is uh, actually uh, a processing and training center where the various artisans in Ghana, in Ghana uh, will be brought together uh, for them to be taught on the current and the new modern technology in bamboo processing. Currently, we uh, just received a, a delegation from China that came to inspect uh, the premises. And uh, what is left is that uh, we are expecting them to come back again with the evaluation of the consultancy and the concept so that we can carry on with that. So in a nutshell, that is what we're doing in Ghana. But the future is bright for our bamboo industry. I'll come back to you on that, Minister. Thank you very much. Very exciting. As the Minister said, ladies and gentlemen, for clarity, one of our regional offices, the regional office for West Africa, is based in Kumasi in Ghana. Mr. Jibril, can I come to you? Because I understand that Nigeria also has a Bamboo and Rattan development program. Am I right? Please, what, what does Bamboo and Rattan mean for you? And how does Nigeria look towards the development of industry? Thank you, Frederick. Uh, Bamboo means a lot to Nigeria in view of the fact that uh, the total forest cover in the country is just about 5% which is extremely very low, considering the size of the country that is over 900,000 square kilometers. For us to have such a forest cover is uh, very, very frightening. So the country looks at bamboo and rattan as an alternative source that will assist uh, in turning around the economy. Why do I say so? In the first place, the country, because of the size, is stranded to the north by the Sahara Desert, and there is currently a problem of desert encroachment from the north, and the sand dunes are moving southwards at an alarming rate of over 400 meters per annum. And uh, the south, where you have the rainforest, is buffeted by coastal erosion and rising sea level. So we need to have a suitable alternative. And we see bamboo as one of those alternatives that could replace the use of, or excessive use of forest products. Um, we have to look at this issue, and in order to improve the value utilization, we've adopted uh, the engagement of stakeholders in what we call the three E's. Engagement, enlightenment, and empowering the youth. And as a result of this, in active collaboration and support from IMBA, we've been able to set up a demonstration plan for the processing of bamboo in the north central part of Nigeria. This will go a long way in assisting to enlighten people and let them know about the qualities and what bamboo aratang can do for the country. Uh, I have to acknowledge the support of IMBA in this respect. And we are also looking at the possibility of linking the Forest Research Institute of Nigeria, which is an institution under the Federal Minister of Environment, to work in developing more species and the fact that they have a small nursery now that I use to propagate the production of bamboo in Nigeria. We believe with the political support we are having right now, uh, the sky can be the limit. And uh, we also have a national uh, steering committee on the production of bamboo and rata in the country. This is in collaboration with other major stakeholders like the NGOs, 
private enterprise and we align this with our national determined contribution as well as the national recovery and growth plan of the federal Ministry of budget and national planning to ensure that the SMEs are fully involved in the activities on in the forest sector. Though bamboo is a grass species, but we believe it has the capacity and it has proved to be so in Nigeria to replace the excessive use of wood for fuel as a means of uh, fuel. The national gas policy in Nigeria is looking at production of uh, cooking gas, which we flare right now in the oil industry. So with these policy decisions, the bamboo will come in handy to support us and to reduce the pressure on the wood that is being felled regularly and therefore help arrest deforestation. Thank you very much. Most interesting. So really combating deforestation and land restoration is an important issue in West and Central Africa. May I turn to the Philippines? Do you have a national program on bamboo? Or are you establishing something? I remember getting a message that there is an activity, there is an initiative. Am I right, Minister? Yes, Your Honor. And can you tell us more about that? Because you have a lot of bamboo as well. How do you see bamboo fitting in the Philippine economy? Okay. Good morning to everyone. Bamboo is a very important renewable commodity in the Philippines. For it is significant contribution to social upliftment and poverty elevation, specifically on farming and fisheries, construction and housing, furnitures, handicrafts and basketry, landscaping uh, for or ornamental gardening, and even ecotourism. And likewise, uh, it is also for environmental stability, rehabilitation of degraded areas, and in abating global warming and natural disasters. So the bamboo and rattan is also incorporated in the Department of Environment a natural resources national greening program, which is 30% or 20% of the whole budget of the national greening program. Bamboo, say this again, Madam. Bamboo, Bamboo is 20% 20% of, of your national, national greening, greening program. program. My goodness. So this is your national program basically to reforest, and 20% is bamboo. Yes. Wow, that's a fantastic uh, statement. May I turn to your colleague next door and ask, what about Panama? I mean, 20% of reforestation in the Philippines, that's an amazing statistic. What about Panama? Is bamboo important in your reforestation activities? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone here in this meeting. Yes, for Panama is very important bamboo in many aspects. To explain in, in context, Panama is part of those vulnerable countries that suffer the negative impacts of climate change every rainy season. We have uh, a season of hurricanes and all the efforts that we do, we, are, we are haven't finished doing those efforts when we receive a lot of catastrophes in the region. Panama is a country of four million people, only 75 thousand square kilometers, but with an important mission. We have cut our country in half, not once, twice for the Panama Canal for sustainable de development in the, in the world. And we also have a mission in our vulnerable region. We do, and we are now developing a humanitarian hub, a logistic hub, and a food hub, because every rainy season, all our neighbor countries will suffer and we are looking for those uh, ideas that we can rebuild again our country and many other countries that's why we find in bamboo as uh, the high tech of nature bamboo is the one that will give us uh, how to to fight uh, against uh, the main 
problem that we have in this century that is the negative effects of climate change. We have our policy, we, we are having all our, our goals of landscape restoration, we are having all our sustainable development goals for a small country, but we are not thinking of what we can do for ourselves. We are also thinking what we can do for our vulnerable region. And in this chair, I'm not only representing my country, I'm representing Central America region that suffers every year, and we need to think and ask for all this South-South cooperation that can help us because we are dealing with the problem every year. Thank you. A very serious issue, and I'd like to come back to you on that. But first, I'd like to ask Minister Goretti, Goretti Kitutu. Bamboo in Uganda. I know you have gorillas that eat bamboo, but is that the only thing which is important? <laughs> what does bamboo mean in Uganda? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, in Uganda, I think bamboo has existed for centuries, especially in our mountainous ecosystems. It occurs naturally, and that's where we have the mountain gorillas, so within the bamboo zone. Now, incidentally, I hear from one of the regions where bamboo is a delicacy. And we actually have a tradition almost dating back to over four centuries where this is used as a food. Now, but in the recent times, bamboo is now taking on a different, different direction where we want to embrace it, especially in the fight for poverty. More so, learning lessons from what has happened here in China. Last year I was here in China, and that conference actually made a U-turn in my working as a Minister of Water and Environment. Now, as I speak now, we are taking on a very aggressive policy of promoting bamboo growing, and we've had actually our budget increased and as a minister I'm going to ensure that this supports bamboo growing. And we have the forestry policy promotes bamboo or it includes bamboo but we now want to have a dedicated policy which I'm, I have in draft form and I will be presenting before cabinet so that we can promote restoration of degraded areas, especially the mountainous areas, the river banks, the lake shores, using this bamboo species, some of them. And I believe if we do that, then we shall have the raw materials mm. to develop our industries. I think as I speak here, I have my colleague, the Minister of Trade, <laughs> He's with me here, and you can see what we've seen here actually is we want to have a revolution in Uganda where we promote this industry and we believe the, there is an opportunity for us to fight poverty whereby we have 68% of our population who have no income at household level. And looking at the lessons that we are learning from here, we believe bamboo can do this miracle. Thank you very much. Fantastic, thank you. So really, you are developing a policy to reforest, which includes bamboo. Yes. The Philippines just told us they have a policy that includes 20% of bamboo. Do you think meetings like this and and even being a member of IMBA, would that allow you to talk to each other? Because I can imagine if you've gone through the same process of developing a policy that includes bamboo and forestry, it might be useful for countries to exchange information and to compare. What is your thinking, madam? Uh, yes, uh, because of the policy direction of this Congress, uh, it's high time for uh, 
a closer coordination among the member countries and exchange of technologies and other things so that we can have the a globe, a green global uh, earth at the end of the mass production. Very true indeed. And I hope this Congress will allow you to do so. What do you feel, madam? I mean, would it help you in the development of your policy or you're already there? No, definitely. As countries, it is good to share lessons. Because when you are developing a po policy, and your neighbor may be ahead. Mm. So you share lessons such that you now pick on issues mm. which have worked. Very and this true. avoids having experiments because already others have done it. So I, I would really encourage that as INBA countries, we have that platform where we can talk to one another. Thank you. Very good indeed. You have the platform anyway, madam, but I think during this Congress, there is even more opportunities. We're talking about effectively land restoration and reforestation, and there are sessions. Um, it was already mentioned by the DG of FAO. We are talking about losing bamboo for restoration, and we have some fantastic case studies. And I believe if I can turn back to Ghana, one of the case studies is about Ghana. You are also developing a restoration, a reforestation program. Is this already in policy or is this still under development? It's a policy, but then uh, with the implementation, it's still at a developing stage. Uh, currently, uh, our attention is particularly to the land restoration aspect. You know, uh, we've had a lot of challenges to do with illegal mining, which had resulted in a lot of uh, land de degradation and uh, also uh, deforestation in our mineral rich areas. So uh, our policy now is to see how uh, we can use bamboo and rattan plantation development to restore these degraded land uh, because uh, that we see as a bit easier than uh, to go into traditional uh, for, uh, forestation, which uh, with the long gestation period, it takes a long time uh, to replace. But with bamboo, and it's uh, easy to replace nature, yeah, that is the way forward. And as such, that is what we intend doing this year. Right. Does Nigeria also look at the policy of including bamboo in its reforestation, Minister? Yes, of course. Nigeria, just like our sister Ghana, had a similar problem of land degradation as a result of mining activities hmm. that has happened in the past uh, five decades or more. And so, uh, just last year, the federal cabinet approved the national policy on afforestation. And uh, very soon, we are going to inaugurate the National Forest Trust Fund. And uh, don't forget that Nigeria recently, in December last year, went into the capital market and issued a green bond. And that green bond, part of the proceed, is to be used in afforestation programs. And uh, the Forest Research Institute of Nigeria is at the forefront of utilizing these funds, as well as the National Park Services. The National Park Services has the responsibility of seven national parks across the entire country. And they will also participate in the activities of afforestation using the green bond proceed. So we have a provision in the National Forest Trust Fund where each of the 37 subnational governments will be required to make provision of some about 50 hectares of land that will be used to plant, uh, uh, to do the afforestation program. And bamboo is part of the species that will be used in this afforestation. Again, uh, most of the part of the country have severe erosion problems. And this is more acute in the southeastern part of the country. Uh, we have a program right now in place known as the Nigeria Erosion and Water Management Project, which has been assisted by the World Bank to restore the degraded land. Land in these areas 
have severe problems of erosion because the, uh, the nature of the soil is loose and friable. And once the soil cover is removed, and the torrential rainfall in this area can lead to disastrous consequences of farmland, houses that have been lost constantly. So to arrest this situation, we have to adopt the program of the watershed management. And part of what we do in the watershed management is to plant trees, including bamboo, as a major of protecting the environment. What we realize is that once you leave the soil and do only the civil engineering job, you will end up getting the soil degraded again. So we have to address the root of the problem, that is the watershed, by planting special. And what we have seen to be very useful is the use of bamboo as a means of protecting the soil. So we have that program in place, and we intend to continue to uh, utilize bamboo and to step it up. And that's why the Forest Research Institute has to come in now to help us in nursing and raising more species that could be covered, that could be helped to use to cover the entire country. Thank you very much. So really, we are listening now, and I think we are learning that basically four of my five partners here are using bamboo for erosion control. And I think, Mr. Sanchez, in a way, that is what you are saying as well. You're linking it to climate change, which, as you are in the hurricane belt, is more severe maybe than countries in Central Africa that are lucky enough they don't have those natural disasters. I think though the Philippines also has its typhoons and I mean whether you call it typhoons or hurricanes, the effects are very similar. Is, is that something that you feel is particularly important? Maybe Madam, I'll ask you and I'll ask you to respond. Just as a, as a response to climate change and to natural disasters as it were, is bamboo really something that can be deployed? Uh, yes. Especially on the recent uh, catastrophe in the Philippines. Mm. Uh, the bamboo plantation is very important, especially on river stabilization, uh, for uh, land restoration, and uh, it's also being used in, for erosion control. And Mr. Sanchez, that is what you would wish to do in Panama as well? <clears throat> in Panama, we have uh, 31 bamboo species. 22 are, are uh, local species and nine are foreign species and because of history have been uh, planted in our country. And what I was saying is that uh, even though it's in our plan and we use it, uh, bamboo has a lot of possibilities a lot of possibilities. And I'm thinking in, and what I have seen here, uh, in the, as, a, as a secondary resource in the economy. Because uh, we need to do our part to accomplish the sustainable development goals, but we also need to score goals. And we need to give joy to our people. Because in a, in, I'm talking about my region, they are suffering every year. So we need to rebuild fast, we need to, to rebuild with, with, with things that really can help us. But I'm also thinking uh, and about uh, joy. We, are in, we, are, we live in a region, a very happy region, and it's because of all the catastrophes that we are suffering every year. So when I was looking at, at, at the, uh, the BART logo, and what about if the yellow part, we put it in the upper part, and we build a goal? And, and what if the, the next World Cup uh, organized by China, all the, the, the goals are of bamboo? So we need to give joy to the people. We need to think in, in out of, of the square because the, the problem is, is, is really heavy. And even though in Panama, uh, because of our canal, we can do things. We are not only thinking what we can do for our country. We are also thinking what we can do for the region. So we are incubating all those crazy ideas that, that can happen. So that's why we are sort of here updating our, our reforestation, forestry policy, including our bamboo local uh, national plan, but not thinking only of, of what we can do only for Panama, what we can do for the region. So I'll be here three days and any crazy idea that somebody can have, please uh, talk to me. And, and in Panama, we will try to incubate because we need to, to help. This South-South cooperation is very important. 
Thank you very much. I like your idea, though, to have the goalposts made of bamboo. It would make the World Cup definitely more exciting. We, we've just talked about bamboo as a plant to help with restoration and to help basically uh, adapt against the effects of climate change. But the other aspect, of course, I would like to talk about is very often we say bamboo could help us with shelter after disasters. How, how is bamboo used for construction? Maybe, let me go to Uganda to start with, Minister. Are you using bamboo for construction? I remember last time you told me your former palaces were made from bamboo. Yes. But what about these days? Are people interested in living in a bamboo house? Is there a bamboo industry already in Uganda? Or is this something that we need to develop further? Yes, in Uganda, we use bamboo in the construction or in the housing industry, but this was not well developed, given that the hectare mm. could not actually allow harvesting a lot, because most of it was in the protected areas, that in the national parks, and there you are restricted to take a little we so that you use sustainably. That. Very good But point. otherwise, in terms of opportunities for the housing industry, actually, like you said, some of the palaces in the old times would be beautifully made from bamboo. And we also have now the refugees. Mm. Actually, we now have another emerging issue that the re most of our refugees are using bamboo as a resource for construction. And this now also puts a lot of pressure on the natural areas where we have bamboo occurring naturally. So we, that's why it is now almost a must as a minister that I have to promote the planting of bamboo mm. so that we can be able to have the housing industry, I think, I think we even have a presidential directive with my colleague, the Minister for Housing. Mm -hmm. In one of the mountainous areas, the soils uh, don't promote, you know, the soils are not good for construction. And we are looking at bamboo as an alternative. So the opportunities are quite immense in that area, in, as far as the bamboo industry is concerned. So, to me, I'm looking at bamboo as what can make Uganda mm. reach the ambitious goal of us hitting the target of middle-income status come 2020. I hope we can help you with that, madam. Let me tell you, in the next few days, you will be able to listen to discussions about construction, but if you go outside, you will see construction. We have a lot of architects and engineers. There is a whole parallel program going on in the next three days with basically people that make their life out of building with bamboo. And you can take away a lot of ideas, I think, and make contacts. You say two things that make me want to turn to the Philippines. One is we have talked, and I know the Philippines has responses to typhoons using bamboo as shelters and not just as structures with tarpaulins but actually looking at durable shelter. The other thing I would like you to respond to is what the minister from Uganda is saying, a presidential decree. The Philippines has a most amazing presidential decree. This is the decree that basically says schools should make their furniture from bamboo. And this, to me, is such an amazing opportunity. Can you say a little bit more about this, Minister? Uh, yes. In the Philippines, uh, using bamboo, it's very refreshing for the housing of the provincial areas. And likewise, uh, using the, uh, for furniture in the schools, we have uh, policy support under Executive Order 879, creating the Philippine Bamboo Industry Development Council to promote the bamboo industry development project and directing the use of bamboo for at least 25% of the disc and other furniture requirement 
of public elementary and secondary schools and prioritizing the use of bamboo in furniture, fixtures, and other construction requirements of government facilities. And this is something that other countries could do as well. It supports the local industry. Yes. And it is a way of using your own natural resources. I guess the challenge is, and this is something I discussed when I was in Manila earlier this year, the supply. And I cannot remember whether it was you, Minister, or whether it was from this side. How can we ensure we have a supply? And maybe, let me go back to Ghana. You are planting. How can you provide a guaranteed supply of bamboo so that you can develop more industry? You have a number of small scale enterprises. Several of them are here. But how can we upscale? How can we make sure we have enough bamboo? Is this part of the regreening policy that you're talking about, the restoration policy? Yes, uh, this is part of our plan. Uh, you know, uh, traditionally we have uh, reserves of about 300,000 hectares. Yes, that we know will not be enough if we intend to go into uh, production of more bamboo products. So uh, we, as a government, are uh, soon going to use, uh, we have a fund called the Plantation Development Fund, uh, which we are going to use uh, in supporting the private sector, especially those uh, who are going into uh, plantation of uh, bamboo uh, as a grant element and grant component to help them finance some of their uh, businesses because uh, you know uh, plantation development is an expensive venture and uh, if you don't help them especially in Ghana that you have a high interest rate then it will be difficult for them I've met a couple of them here and uh, I've had a discussion also with my colleague uh, Deputy Minister for Environment who happens to be here with me and uh, we are teaming up uh, that uh, when we get back home, we are going to call them to a meeting and see how we can support them uh, in the form of grants and finances. At least some little push for them to be able to go into a large-scale plantation development. We as a government would also be championing that. As we speak now, the Forestry Commission in our country also has a mandate to promote uh, bamboo plantations. And that is where Baradep also comes in. So uh, it's something we are going to promote and to ensure that soon we'll have a large reserves of bamboo uh, plantations and, and as a raw material so that it can help sustain the bamboo uh, economy that we intend to promote. Very interesting, Minister. I would like to add that what I have seen in the last couple of years is that there are now investment opportunities and there are companies um, and investors that are starting to think about actually paying for planting bamboo because it is a relatively short return on investment. Bamboos grow very fast, as we've heard several times already earlier today, and you will hear it again, I'm sure, during the next days. So you will get a return on investment faster than maybe with other opportunities. And I think this is something that is changing. I think it was Madame Zhang who said, you know, there is a new drive into bamboo, and I think this is definitely one opportunity. What about Nigeria? Is, is investment in bamboo something you think is already realistic, or is this still a promise of the future and wishful thinking? No, it's the issue of the present, not actually the future, because there is extreme pressure on the, the available forest resource. I will give an example uh, of the African rosewood, which has been massively exploited in Nigeria, and is under the CITES Convention. We move it to Appendix 2, which means the trade is now regulated, and most of the destination for export is here in China. And uh, because 
we are keen to reduce the amount of logging by about 50% this year. We have to find an alternative. And like I said earlier, on the Forest Research Institute has been put in the front burner to assist in doing this uh, intervention. The institute has about four uh, academic institutions that award uh, diplomas, training in foresters. It has about 15 outposts across the entire country. All these outposts were charged with the responsibility of propagating the use of bamboo and raising seedlings also to assist those who might be interested in utilizing it. So it is a concerted effort, not thinking of the future actually, but wanting it to be done today. And this is exactly what we're doing in the country now to ensure that uh, the focus is on the bamboo production and development and utilization as well so that uh, we can reduce the pressure on the wood that we are failing at an alarming rate. Thank you, sir. I think this is a real example of bamboo is no longer poor man's timber, but it is an economic opportunity. I'm looking at my watch. It's quarter to 12. We have another 15 minutes. Would the ministers be prepared to take some questions from the floor? And can we do that? I have to look at my colleagues here. I don't know if we have microphones, but is there someone that I see somebody standing up? Um, Hao Ying, is there a way we can get a microphone to that gentleman? This one? That's the danger if you give the DG the microphone. He has different ideas. But it would be very nice if we could get a comment, sir. Good morning, Mr. Hans. Thank you very much for... Can you introduce yourself? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm Guilherme Corte from Brazilian Babu Producers Association. And we are very, very glad to be part of IMBA now. We must say you thank you very much to receive us as you receive many Brazilians here from many different associations and producers and government also. And we may ask you some questions that we are testing in, in Amazon with Embrapa, some research doing bamboo plantation together with fibers, rattan fibers and some trees. If you also are doing that in degraded land in Amazon to avoid cutting trees there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Cort from the Brazilian Industry Association. And if I make the point, it's not so much a question, it's just making the point that bamboo can be used in Brazil, in Acre in particular as well, for land restoration purposes. I have a, a hand there. Can we move the microphone to the front row? Uh, thank you. I would like to thank the panelists uh, for their excellent uh, presentation. Uh, may, may I ask you to, to just more, identify I'm, yourself? I'm more Michael Erike, uh, Minister of State for Trade and Industry from Uganda. <laughs> Thank you, sir. As you shape, this could be any of the panelists, of course, the, you could respond to this. As you shape your policies, having listened to your uh, proposals, is it possible to uh, look at other equally important uh, uses of bamboo because a lot has been said about construction, environmental protection, uh, land uh, restoration. But I know when I, ha when, when I listen to the minister from Uganda, there is, bamboo is also a delicacy. It could be part of food. Is there a way that we could also enshrine this in the policies to have bamboo uh, be part of the product for export, and then medicinal aspects. I don't know how you would look at this as you shape your policies. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask each of them to respond. Can I just take one question here? And then we will get back to our panelists. Yes, good morning. My name is Mark Halley. I'm a member of the INBAR uh, Board of Trustees. And I'd like to address a, a question to Minister Jibril. I'm, I had the honor of visiting your country uh, uh, a couple times in, in the last year. And I'm aware that there's a, a massive program to sort of stop desertification in the north, to put in place a sort of green curtain or a green wall or a green belt. 
and that this is deemed by uh, Nigeria to be very important also for stabilizing livelihoods in, in that part of uh, Nigeria, which has been fairly volatile over the past few years. Is bamboo a big part of that ecological restoration uh, program? Or, and do you have, have plans to develop bamboo on a very large scale for restoration of, of the landscapes and ecosystems so that they can support uh, a decent livelihood of the populations there? Thank you. Thank you very much. Minister Jibril, can I ask you to, to answer that last question? And then maybe we can just go through each to respond to the question, what other economic opportunities are there from bamboo? Well, thank you. Uh, maybe I should refer to the last uh, speaker who talked about the Great Green Wall. Of course, Nigeria is one of the 11 countries uh, that is involved in the Pan-African Agency for the Great Green Wall, which we all know is an African Union initiative to convert desertification in the Sahel and the Sahara fringes. Uh, Nigeria, though the program for the entire African continent is uh, from Dakar in Senegal to Djibouti, about 7,000 7, kilometers, in Nigeria it covers about 1,500 kilometers. And there are 11 frontline states or sub-regions that are in this program. Uh, the idea, of course, is to plant uh, trees and arrest the movement of the Sahel and the Sahara. In my earlier submission, I talked about the desert moving about 400 meters annually. Uh, this is an alarming uh, rate. So definitely, we have the program within the national agency, uh, which is an affiliate of the Pan-African Agency. And part of the means of arresting the desert encroachment is some form of livelihood, planting of woodlots, as well as some of these areas uh, bamboo can be grown in Nigeria in almost every part of the country, except some few extreme north where it is extremely dry. But in the frontline states that are nine, there are about th three states south, uh, in the, behind the frontline states. And these three states are contiguous, and these are areas that bamboo can be grown because they are a bit weighter than the extreme frontline state. So we have tasked the national agency of the Great Green Wall in Nigeria with that responsibility, and they are collaborating with the Forest Research Institute, who is developing the seedlings for them to utilize in uh, actualizing that our goal. So uh, we are considering that in the GGW program. And then on the issue of using it as an economic uh, uh, front, yes. We, we think seriously about that. We are banning the export of charcoal because of the impact on forest cover. Mm. And we believe charcoal from Babu can be a good replacement, and we are working towards that, but it has not yet been fully developed. We are still at the conceptual stage, but we believe we can make headway in that respect. So it could be seen also as an economic corridor, and we are not looking, uh, we are looking seriously on that issue, and definitely it is part of our program that we want to actualize. Thank you, sir. Of course, when you make charcoal from bamboo, you basically make charcoal from grass. You don't cut trees. So this is something that I think is very important when we think about the whole issue of deforestation, reforestation, and climate change. Okay. Minister, are you eating bamboo in Ghana? And what other economic opportunities are there? Uh, yes, we eat bamboo. Ah. Yes, but then uh, I would say it's something that we've copied from the Chinese because uh, we will go to uh, the Chinese restaurants enjoy the bamboo shoots a lot. <laughs> but traditionally, it is not uh, a dish that we not eat really. in Ghana. Mm. 
But then, uh, apart from land restoration, using bamboo as land restoration, uh, like the question I asked, we in Ghana uh, also uh, produce a lot of uh, charcoal briquettes from uh, bamboo. Uh, currently, a large percentage of the charcoal briquettes that are produced are bagged, packaged, and exported. Uh, what is left is uh, how uh, we have to uh, promote it locally, its local use, by encouraging our people to use it. Yes, but uh, I, I know it's due to uh, production cost and uh, revenue uh, issues. That is why uh, the producers uh, prefer exporting it than uh, to sell it locally. Uh, apart from that, also as an alternative source of livelihood, uh, what uh, we do uh, is that uh, we encourage the use of bamboo for arts and crafts, uh, where bamboo is used locally as ornaments and also as crafts that people use in uh, decorating their homes. Yes, Very and true. this is one sector that uh, we are encouraging because uh, that uh, is a, a rural enterprise uh, mm. uh, function and uh, uh, lo the local people can do it without uh, uh, a lot of capital involved. So this is what we are encouraging, yes. Thank you, Minister. May I add one thing? Because I know one of our bamboo ambassadors makes bamboo bicycles in Ghana. She's with uh, us yeah, she's, somewhere. Yeah. And she's, she's somewhere here. She's, you she's know. in one of the sessions, so yes. you can hear about it. I, I mentioned it uh, previously, so I didn't feel like mentioning it again. But I would say that uh, she's been doing very well. Yes. And Thank I you. think she needs, a, she needs a prize from Ghana, that is, for promoting Ghana in that manner. Okay. We also have a bamboo bicycle producer from the Philippines. So, also in the Philippines, they make bamboo bicycles. But what other economic opportunities do you see, Minister? Actually, in the previous years, we are already exporting uh, furniture, basketry, and handicrafts. Mm -hmm. But because uh, the sources of materials are, were taken from the natural stance, it's becoming exhausted the resources for the raw material. That's why we incorporated that with our national training program, the planting of bamboo. Then since last year, we completed almost 50,000 hectares in bamboo plantation in the Philippines for last year. And for the year, and for the year, we are anticipating to complete and 18,000 hectares for bamboo plantation all over the Philippines. Fantastic. But it's interesting, you come back to the issue of supply, because that is so critical. When we want to develop industry, we have to plant. Minister, in Panama, what are the opportunities? As, as I told before, and as my friend of Uganda said, uh, that's what I was uh, saying about uh, giving joy to the people. In Panama, we updated all our environmental policies and integrated them. The climate change policy, the forestry policy, the ecotourism policy, protected areas policy as wildlife, as not only a bioindicator, also as, as part of ecotourism. And, and, and also, we are thinking everything that can help us achieve, not only in Panama, circular economy. Human, mankind, or humans, we have three challenges. Water, energy, and waste. So everything that can help us establish a circular economy for our country, and even being uh, as, a, as, a, as a nursery of ideas, that, that what is Panama uh, given to the world. We have done it in the past for sustainable development, as I told, cutting our country in half to build the Panama Canal for the sustainable development of the whole world. So we also updated our policies, not only thinking of what Panama can do for, our, for ourselves, so what can give to the world. So we want to be that window, we want to be that door made of bamboo, so everybody can put their own, own ideas, because we are a small country, as I told you, four million people, 
75,000 square kilometers, but with a, a lot of heart for the world and a lot of, of ideas. And we come to, to these events and Congress to learn and think what we can do for our region. Fantastic, thank you. Minister, do you want to answer your colleague? Okay, yes, yeah. <laughs> well, one minister of Uganda to yes. another. Thank you very much. I think all of us here are ministers for environmental, forestry, or water. So that's why we are mostly concentrating around the area of planting the material. Indeed. For purposes of protecting what is within our mandate. Like I think I mentioned protection of riverbanks, lake shores, mountainous areas. But this in a way is another way of providing the material for the trade and industry. Because that's the challenge which we have in Uganda. So my colleague, actually the policy which we are preparing, in Uganda we have now I think over 10 uses of bamboo. And I have to mention that we've started making bamboo wine. Ah. So we are moving. <laughs> so you can see the innovations. And I think what I can only tell you is that interest yourself and let's work as a team. The sky is the limit with the bamboo industry. Thank you very much, madam. Ladies and gentlemen, I could talk for another hour. This is very, very interesting, very exciting, and some great insights on what countries really think about bamboo. I think we all agree bamboo is extremely important for erosion control, therefore for livelihoods. But I think what Minister Goretti just said, it is also the source of the value chains that are maybe the responsibility of other ministries. So we are helping to create the, the capital, as it was, the natural capital that others can then harvest and make profits out of. I would like to thank my panelists for their frank and open discussion. As I said, I know for ministers this is maybe not the normal way of uh, being in a, in a conference, so I thank you very much for being so open and giving us your thoughts. I hope you agree with me. This was an exciting session, a good kickoff for hopefully three days of real debate and real thinking. I would like to give my panelists a round of applause and then ask Dr. Leo to take over. Thank you very much. Thank you, ministers and Dr. Hans Friedrich. We now welcome Deputy Director General of International Bamboo and Return Organization, Dr. Li Zhiyong. 感谢费汉斯博士，有请国际竹藤组织副总干事李志勇博士。现在开始今天上午众多议程中最后一项合作协议的签字仪式。作为事件竹藤大会的重要产出，大会组委会特别推荐了七项合作协议，在这里签署。
费本华博士，与深圳华大基因研究院副院长刘鑫先生共同签署协议书。近年来，国际竹藤中心与中国林科院、中国科学院国家基因研究中心合作，开展了毛竹基因组测序研究，并取得了重要成果。期待 ICBR 与华大基因研究院的合作伙伴的合作，接出丰硕成果，向他们表示祝贺。下面，签署。关于成立国际竹藤科学创新研发联盟的倡议，有请 ICBR 常务副主任费本华博士、马来西亚林业研究所资深研究员旺塔米兹博士、UBC 林学院院长约翰英尼斯教授、葡萄牙里斯本大学梁龙林学院佩德罗阿森尼奥教授。美国西佛吉尼亚大学王锦新教授共同签署倡议书，成立国际竹藤科学研究创新研发联盟，将有效地发挥各方优势，推进竹藤在基础研究、应用研究和产业化中的快速发展，并服务于竹产业的。让我们以热烈掌声祝贺合作愉快、合作成功！非常感谢。接下来。签署成立竹藤产业发展创新驱动联盟的倡议，有请 ICBR 常务副主任费本华博士、国际竹藤组织费汉斯博士、中国林产工业有限公司总经理孙良志先生、中国竹产业协会秘书长李小华女士共同签署倡议书。企业是竹藤科技创新的重要力量，研发机构与企业的创新合作，必将提升竹藤科技创新水平和提升竹藤企业的创新能力，并推动产业化快速发展。让我们以热烈掌声祝贺他们各方的合作愉快谢谢各位。下面，签署国际竹藤组织与国际竹藤中心关于合作建设青岛国际竹藤创新研究院的意向书。有请国际竹藤组织总干事费汉斯博士、国际竹藤中心常务副主任费本华博士共同签署合作意向书。二十多年来。国际竹藤中心与国际竹藤组织开展了长期并富有成效的合作，联合共建了黄山太平三亚竹藤科技合作基地、青岛竹藤科技创新研究院的合作，将深化双方的合作，并取得更多的成果。祝贺的，祝贺他们。接下来，签署国际竹藤组织
和国际农业发展基金非洲竹农生计发展项目合同。有请国际竹藤组织总干事费汉斯博士、国际农业发展基金助理副总裁夏罗特·沙尔福德女士共同签署项目合同。国际农发基金 （IFAD） 长期支持印巴成员国的竹藤资源培育与加工利用，为亚非拉成员国的生计改善、经济发展和生态环境保护做出了非常积极的贡献。祝贺他们！下面签署国际竹藤组织与。国际热带木材组织亮检备忘录，有请国际竹藤组织总干事费汉斯博士、国际热带木材组织执行主任格哈德·迪特勒博士共同签署合作意向书。大家知道，英巴的许多成员国来自热带地区，英巴与国际热带木材组织开展合作，必将对。热带竹资源和藤资源的保护、培育和加工利用发挥积极的推进作用。我们预祝双方合作愉快，取得成功我们也非常高兴地邀请到国际农发基金夏洛特女士给大家发表一个简短的致辞。Dr. Friedrich,、uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the president of IFAD, I'm honored to attend this ceremony for the signing of the large grant agreement for the intra-African bamboo smallholder livelihood. Development program. The grant financing is expected to touch on four important areas in our work on poverty reduction. These include, firstly, scaling up and diversifying the existing bamboo value chains and promoting industrialization. Secondly, restoring degraded areas. Thirdly. Promoting the integration of bamboo into country development plans, particular for climate change, and fourthly, enhancing South-South cooperation with Africa and between Africa and China. IMBAR has been a strong partner for IFAD in promoting poverty alleviation through developing the bamboo sector. Over our years of working together, we have witnessed successful results from a number of grant projects implemented by IMBAR. I am convinced that this partnership will continue to be productive and will directly contribute to improving the lives and livelihoods of smallholder farmers and their families. Thank you very much for your attention. 非常感谢夏洛特女士，也感谢伊法的长期以来对竹藤事业的关心支持，也期待着今后的富有成效的合作。女士们、先生们，我还想还想利用这个机会给大家分享一个呃喜讯。今天我们也得知，喀麦隆政府已正式批准在其首都雅温德成立英巴。在中部非洲的区域办公室，这将是印巴在全球设立的第五个区域办公室，是在非洲设立的第三个办公室。那么，非洲目前拥有印巴成员国最多的区域，该办公室的建立将会极大的促进印巴与中部非洲区地区国家的沟通与合作。我们也期待着。与喀麦隆政府共同合作，促进中部非洲竹藤产业的可持续发展。最后，再次预祝各方合作愉快、合作成功、合作仪式的签字
，就到这里结束。女士们、先生们，世界足坛大会今天上午的议程已圆满结束，谢谢大家。在这里，这地方我还有一个大会的通知：今天晚上由国际足坛组织和中国国家林业和草原局联合主办的欢迎晚宴。时间将在下午六点钟开始，请大家欢迎大家光临，谢谢大家。